All right, good morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this. Um, today we're gonna read um, a book called Dragonflies. So it's kind of continuing our insect theme um, that we should be wrapping up this week. And we're gonna read this book about dragonflies and learn a little bit more about how they live. And it's gonna go perfectly with your exit ticket today. So make sure you pay extra close attention. Um, I wanna do this book in one recording, so I might read a little bit quickly um, that way we can get through it. So it says, amazing dragonflies. You're walking past a lake or stream when suddenly, bzz, something big, shiny, and green zooms past your head. It's bigger than a bumblebee. It's faster than a butterfly. It's an amazing dragonfly. Here's a photograph. It says, southern hawker dragonfly. What are dragonflies? Dragonflies are flying insects with long bodies and two pairs of wings. They come in every color of the rainbow bright red, sunny orange, even metallic blue, green, and gold. Some dragonflies have colorful stripes on their wings or bodies. Some even change color over time. So here's a nice diagram that they put here for us. Remember a diagram is a picture with labels because it's showing us different parts of things. So it says what makes an insect a dragonfly. So these are the specific parts of its body that it's pointing out to us that are special to a dragonfly. So it has its jaws, and then it has the big, large eyes, like we see like in flies, which we read about earlier this week. Um, it has six legs, just like all insects, a long, skinny body, and two pairs of wings. So pairs meaning that they both match on each side. Remember, a pair is two, so it has one pair here and one pair here. A dragonfly has a large head, a long, skinny body, and two pairs of wings. Dragonflies are often confused with damselflies because the two kinds of insects look like each other. You can tell dragonflies and damselflies apart when they land. When a damselfly isn't flying, it folds its wings together and holds them above its back. Dragonfly wings can't fold like a damselfly's. Dragonflies keep their wings stretched out to either side all the time. This is an important distinction between these two. Because if you look at them in the photographs, they do look very similar, right? They've got the legs, the long skinny body, the bigger head. So very, very similar. Damselflies also have two pairs of wings. But they're saying the biggest distinction, the biggest part that makes them different insects is that the damselfly's wings fold back behind its body when it's resting. So when it lands on you know, a plant or a tree or a twig, whatever, its wings fold back but a dragonfly doesn't, their wings can't fold. So their wings are always stretched out open. So if you see one, um, anytime you're outside or if you see them on a branch or um, if they land on something, see if you can notice the wings to be able to tell which one is which. Young dragonflies. Dragonflies need water during every stage of their life. Adults lay their eggs in water or on plants near water. The young dragonflies called nymphs live in water for one or more years after hatching. So here's a photograph showing the eggs and how they attach to the um, leaf here. This photograph has the dragonfly, how it's resting on uh, a little like piece of wood. And it says some dragonflies lay their eggs in rotting wood under water, which is the main picture. That's why it says main, meaning this picture. Some dragonflies can lay hundreds of eggs at a time and an inset means the little picture that's inside of it. So these are two different captions pointing out the different photographs. So this dragonfly is laying its eggs under like the water here in the wood where it's called like the rotting wood because, you know, when the wood sits in the water, it starts to um, rot and like go bad. And then here we saw all the hundreds of eggs stuck to the leaf. Nymphs look very different from adult dragonflies. They have gills inside their bodies, which allow them to breathe underwater. Dull green or brown coloring helps them hide from predators, such as frogs or fish and frogs. To escape predators, they squirt a powerful stream of water through their gills. It launches the nymphs forward at high speed. As nymphs grow, their skin doesn't grow with them. Instead, dragonfly nymphs shed their entire outer layer each time they need to grow. When a nymph is ready to become an adult, it crawls out of the water the adult dragonfly comes out of the last shed layer. And here's a photo of a dragonfly nymph. So you can probably see some comparisons to 
butterflies and caterpillars in their stages, right? How the caterpillar kept growing and shedding its skin. And also some similarities to what we learned in science about the frog life cycle and how the frogs lay their eggs in the water and then the baby tadpoles live in the water and then they come out. So that's something that's similar between those two animals that we read about. Super sight. Dragonflies have amazing eyesight. Each eye is made up of about 30,000 tiny sections. As adults, dragonflies have the largest eyes of any kind of insect. They can see in almost all directions at once. Dragonflies' super eyesight helps them catch prey. They can find a single target even in a swarm of thousands. And this caption says, close up. Dragonfly eyes look as if they are made of window screens. So if you look very closely, you can see that there's little tiny dots that make up the whole entire eye. So it's like many, many different kind of lenses, which is similar to um, a fly. Amazing flight. Adult dragonflies are among the world's fastest flying insects. They reach speeds of 100 body lengths per second. That's more than 22 miles per hour for a large dragonfly. When a dragonfly zips into high speed, it speeds up faster than the world's fastest race cars. Male dragonflies defend their homes against other males. If they spot an intruder, they fight by performing high speed flight displays. These contests let dragonflies show off their speed and size without being hurt. So it says tracking dragonflies. How do scientists find out where a dragonfly swarm is headed? They glue on miniature radio transmitters then scientists use cars and an airplane to track the dragonflies as they move across the country. So that's like how scientists can learn more about them and study them so that we're able to have all this like really cool information. Like we're able to know that they can fly up to 22 miles an hour because the scientists have been able to use these little trackers on them and been able to get all the information about what they do and um, how they live their life. So it's pretty cool. Unlike most flying insects, dragonflies control each wing independently. They can hover like helicopters or swoop and dive like fighter jets. They can fly forward, backward, and even upside down. Dragonflies are quick, nimble flyers. Do, do you know, scientists study dragonfly flight in order to understand how to make better airplanes and helicopters. Scientists even hope to create a robotic dragonfly that they can send places to trick or send places too tricky or dangerous for humans to visit. So it's pretty cool that we're able to use um, the wings of a dragonfly and how a dragonfly actually flies and is able to fly to model that after our own helicopters and our own um, airplanes. So it's pretty interesting. Amazing hunters. An adult dragonfly is a high speed flying predator one of the most successful hunters in the animal world. Scientists say that a dragonfly catches its prey more than nine times out of 10. Compare that to a lion, which catches its dinner only one out of four tries. Dragonflies can deliver rapid, powerful bites. They surprise mosquitoes and other small insects by attacking from behind and below. They often eat their catch without bothering to land. This says damselflies make good meals for dragonflies. Dragonflies for dinner. Dragonflies flying skills help them avoid most predators. Many animals like to eat dragonflies. Birds, lizards, frogs, spiders, and even other dragonflies. Not many can catch these speedy insects. Humans eat dragonflies too. In many parts of the world, dragonflies are a special treat. You can buy them threaded onto sticks like skinny corn dogs. An adult bee eater holds a dragonfly in its beak. So that's kind of funny because remember we read that other book about edible bugs. So we can put dragonflies on the list of bugs that we can eat one day. Swarms. Sometimes dragonflies gather in huge groups or swarms. They may swarm to feed on large numbers of insect prey found in one place. They also swarm to fly south as the weather cools. That or the way birds travel south for the winter. So that's something else similar to butterflies, how they have to move um, to warmer climates to get away from the cold. And also talking about swarms, um, they that's like how we learn about bees and ants, how they stay in colonies or groups. So dragonflies can also form swarms and they all group together like that. Scientists say that dragonfly swarms are hard to photograph. I wonder why they're hard to photograph. 
if you notice in this how they're blurry, why is it blurry? Is it because the dragonflies are moving too fast and the photograph can't catch it? If that's what you were thinking, then you are right on target. A safe place for dragonflies. In 1985, people in Japan created the world's first dragonfly park. Since then, dragonfly parks have sprung up in Europe and the United States as well. Dragonflies are amazing creatures, and people all over the world are starting to realize it. The dragonfly park in Singapore has large statues of dragonflies in the lake. Dragonflies worldwide. There are nearly 3,000 kinds of dragonflies. They are found all over the world in almost every kind of habitat. Check out a nearby stream, pond, or lake and see if you can spot these fancy flyers for yourself. All right, so that is our book about dragonflies. I want you to use what you learned from this when you do your assignment. And if you wanna do something extra, you can write a little bit about a compare and contrast about all these different insects that we've been learning about. And you can um, email it to me and that way I'm gonna have some extra work from you.